today's video I'm going to show you how to take an old boring steel door like this and install a brand new window in it. It's really simple and it's going to blow your mind. You can do this project at home. So just full disclosure, the video today is sponsored by no one. <laughs> That's right. I bought this window to put in my own door myself. That was always the plan. The, the bottom line is when I go and buy this steel door, the cost of the door and the cost of the window is still $100 cheaper than if I buy the door with a window in it. I know. And all we do is drill, cut, and screw. These are three basic tasks anybody can do at home. I'm going to show you all your options. So, I'm going to unpackage my window and we'll show you what I'm talking about. Okay, so inside your package when you buy your light, yes, they call it a light even though it's a window, it's door talk, right? Every trade out there has got its own language. And in this language, this is called a light. <laughs> it's a half light because it fills half the door. And you've got this little group of plastic caps and screws. Because the way it installs from the inside is you screw it together, okay? And then you put the plastic caps on. This is just like a trim, right? That's how it comes together. And so what you do is you cut a hole in the door Stick this trim together, you screw it together, you throw in these little plastic caps, and you're done. All right, let's get down to the nitty gritty. The most amazing part of this situation, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna warn you, you're gonna wanna measure this yourself. But here, this is where it gets mind blown. The door is already stamped with the six panel design, all right? The measurement for the hole that you want for a half light is from the corner of the stamped down to this corner and the same on the other side. So they've already stamped the exact location that you want to cut out. I know, it doesn't get any easier. No measuring, no squares, no fancy tools. Just grab a drill with a drill bit that goes through steel, and put a hole in all four corners. Step one. Get easier than that. What do you think, Max? Pretty simple. All right. But the trim on the window has about a half inch overhang. Mercy all the way around. Nothing to worry about. And the reason I'm wearing gloves is because this is metal. It's a steel door. Step two is to cut it with a jigsaw. Not just any blade. Use a metal blade. And metal blades come in metal thin and metal medium. I get the medium. Should be at least a medium thickness gauge door. For peace of mind's sake. Is inch and a half. Okay. Which means I'm gonna have to probably cut from both sides. It's a shame. Step three, we're just going to confirm that this thing will fit. <clears throat> oh yeah, noise. All right, well, this goes from the other side. That's pretty awesome. Right? Don't move. Okay. Whew. Now use the screws that come in the package. You'll notice the tip is cut off. So it acts more like a machine screw. 
but it connects all of these. Okay, you don't have to excuse me. The gloves were for safety. I'm done cutting metal. Now I need to feel what I'm doing. I can't use gloves when I'm using a drill. So we're gonna just insert the screw, make contact. That's it, nice and gentle. When it starts to get enough resistance that the chuck is slipping over, stop. All right, and then, ah, uh, I'm just gonna go to all four corners first now. There we go. And you'll know you're done because the, it's a nice tight seal here on and on the door. I know it's almost too ridiculous how easy this is. Eh? Now the options that are available, and these are in stock at the local hardware store. You can get this, you can get a more of a clear glass, different decorations. They also have it with the, um, the blinds are built inside the glass. So they never get dirty, they never get to be cleaned, they never get damaged. That's another option. It's completely personal. But the best thing about this is, ah, my door was 200 bucks. My light window was just under 200 bucks. And I got to pick the customization right up front no waiting. If you order a custom door like this, okay, you're six to eight weeks for delivery, and you better like what you find. <laughs> this way, you can just order a door, get it installed, get on with the rest of your renovation, and when everything is done and you're not making a mess anymore, you can come back and you can decorate. You can even buy this in a full glass. It's the same process. You just drill your other hole down here. Just go to the outside of all the detail and you can cut all that out and you can put in a full glass with a blind. Piece of cake. And if something happens during your renovation, you're only out $150, $200 on a door instead of a huge custom door, right? So when you're renovating, put in a regular steel door. When you're all done, add the glass. The reason they call them a light is because it adds light. <laughs> it's kind of it goes without saying. Now, this is really cool. So there are two kinds of caps I'm going to show you, okay? There's a regular cap, and it's just flat, and then it ramps up straight. And then there's an inside corner cap. Kind of looks like a tulip. Find your tulips first. Make sure you put them in your inside corner holes. Line them up with the trim. Bam. Done. I know. I know. It's that easy. Not everything in life is designed to be difficult. Customizing a door is definitely a DIY project anybody can do. Now the other step that we're going to do on this video is we're going to show you how to customize the paint on a new steel door because everybody wants to know how to paint a door and there is definitely a right way and a wrong way to do it. So as soon as I'm done playing with these caps, we're going to go outside and paint the door for you. We'll go through all the steps. And all you got to do really when you're going to paint a door is make sure that you start bright and early. You've already bought your supplies, you're ready to go. And it's one of those days where it's nice and warm outside without being too humid. Because you want to be able to have the door open to dry for about eight hours after you're done painting. And that is really the secret. Otherwise it ends up when you close the door for safety, <laughs> you end up also getting the door stuck to the frame. Very important that you set this project up, install the window on one day, and then paint it on the next. Okay, because this can be done in about 10 minutes. But the painting is gonna take about an hour, and then you really wanna let it dry. Painting the exterior of the door requires only three major things. <laughs> one, you gotta be the right temperature. It's gotta be sustainable. Low wind is preferable because you'd be surprised the amount of debris that the wind will blow around. Three, you got to do it with your door open and leave it there to dry for a few hours. And fourth is a basic approach to painting. A light scuff with a sanding block, brush for cutting all your edges, okay, because we're only painting the one surface. So you don't want to just use a roller up against the edge. It always looks like junk. So I'll show you how to cut in the edge and get a nice straight line. And lastly, just a mini roller. Now, 
We picked this up at the local harbor store in the country today. Everybody's on lockdown, so it's hard to shop. Thank God they had something. First thing we want to do is loosen the hardware from the backside, just enough so that we can get a brush in underneath and behind it, so we're not sealing it to the door. Because if you ever want to change your hardware in the future, you want to make sure that the door dries thoroughly before you reattach this, or it could peel. Lots and lots. There we go. Nice. Now quick sand. Now the plastic edging around the new window we put in doesn't need to be sanded. It'll already accept the paint just fine the way it is. This is just to help create a surface that'll be really good to bond with so that it doesn't rub off when somebody bumps up against it. Important. Get all around your locking hardware. This is where people are going to have their keys dangling, hands with their rings. This is the most susceptible area on the whole door and very thorough in this area. All right, done. Here we are. Since I'm working with just one quart, I'm not going to leave any paint in the can. It's too small to use my brush with. I'm just going to seal this up, save that for reference. Now, the only other rule you need to know is that when you're painting with latex versus oil. So if you're using latex, you always start at the top and work your way down. When you paint with oil, you start at the bottom and you work your way up. <laughs> That's because oil has this natural uh, tendency to want to droop and sag. So the way you manage how much paint is on the surface is you always brush up until it dries out. Okay? So the, and always lift until your brush dries out. So the ne next time you grab there, you're pulling extra paint out of the way. Just a little tip for you. But with latex, it pretty much bonds in place and doesn't drip too much, especially with a good quality paint. So there's a couple places we want to cut in run against the trim. We're actually going to paint the white of this as well because we aren't going to have any white color on the outside of our house. So I'm actually going to set my brush right there on that edge and paint from inside the bristle. Now if you want to see how to use a paintbrush properly, we have a video how to paint. We'll put it in the card right over here, okay? But if you know how to paint with a brush, you'll never have to use tape again. You just set it and forget it. Beautiful. All right, now we're going to take the excess here and I'm going to run the edge. Now when you paint from inside a brush and you paint over the edge, you'll end up with a nice clean line. All right, one more time. And I'm just going to fill that in to get rid of drips. Okay. okay, so now we're going to actually cut this edge. Now this metal rolls right over to this joint here, and that's where we want to get our paint to. So we're just going to first set our paint in the region. Okay. Once we establish the line, we'll just pull it straight down. And you can do this three, four, ten, a hundred times, whatever it takes. It's all about how much paint's in your brush, how many bristles you can get comfortable on that edge. Just roll straight up the side. There we go. Here we are. Get a, get a few bristles around the edge. All right. Okay, now let me just cut this line in here real quick. Okay. So then after you do all your cutting in, you take your roller before the paint dries and you want to texturize your, your surface. Okay, remember this is going to all take two coats. So if you see little white spots or faded lines, don't be too concerned. All right. Now with the roller, you can go right to the edge. Just don't use any pressure. Okay, and it's just to create a nice uniform texture. Now remember, all you need to do to paint a door is give it an application, about a half an hour of dry time. You don't need to sand in between coats, but if you take the sanding sponge and hit the main part of the surface real gently, any of the dirt or debris that got caught in the paint while you were doing it will be rubbed off. You have one more coat and you're finished. All you have to do after that is just sit back and let it dry. Just a quick note, window companies don't like it when you paint their trim. They'll tell you there's no warranty just to protect themselves in case you're using the wrong product. But this is a vinyl and if you're using a latex paint, it bonds great, it won't cause you any problems. And for the record, a lot of companies when they're doing colors on the outside of a window, paint their vinyl. So they build the window and then they send it to the paint afterwards. So this is normal practice. So don't be discouraged to do this kind of project if you see on your product literature that the warranty is void if you paint. 
I'm not saying you should void all your warranties in life, but I'm just saying sometimes they use that as an excuse to not be responsible. When you're rolling around the doors, you want to resist the temptation to put too much paint on. It's better if you can almost see the wall behind, right? Get it really extra off the brush. I always start at the top, roll around, flattening out your brush so that it goes in behind your fixture, okay? If you find yourself with too much paint, just rub it off somewhere and get back to it in a minute. All right. Nice. There we go. That is actually a really good looking area. I know it's a little ugly right now, but trust me, that second coat will fill in all those nooks and crannies. It's going to look perfect. As you can see, fixing up your front door is definitely still an option. If you have something old and boring, you can give it a refresh, right? You can renovate anything and be your own contractor. That is the message here on this channel. So make sure that you like and subscribe this video if you learned something cool today. You don't want to miss the videos that are coming up. And make sure you hit the bell for notifications. It's a really important part so that you don't miss out. We're kicking out almost two videos a week now. So we're very, very busy around here and you want to stay with us and be up to date. Now listen, if you'd like to see how the rest of this building here, how this project came around, we put on brand new waterproofing. We did the siding and the soffit, the fascia, all these things. We did a video on this. It's on our other channel, Reality Renovision. And you can go and check that out and watch that project video on what it's like to renovate the outside of your house. Because that honestly is the number one return on investment for homeowners. You can do all of this yourself. Windows, siding. See you soon.